can ever replace the trust on God energy. Because the trust on God energy is the trust that everything is consistently and persistently independent of gaps in reality. There are no gaps in reality. This is the simplest concept that defies so many because they can't quite grasp how they can exist if there are no gaps in reality. Excuse me to interrupt you, but did you say the simplest concept or simple? Simple. Anyway, there will never be another day like today. It's impossible. There can never be another day like today. Today is the day that everyone will say, hooray, hooray, because today is the day that I came to say, love is the way. Love is the way. This is Jesus, and I've been waiting for my opportunity to be heard, because you, Stephanie, are a friend of mine, and we have had many discussions through space and time about the reality of God energy. And this is something that you trust upon. You trust upon the fact that there are no gaps in reality. And therefore, everything is connected in some way. And it is how we play. Because you say, well, Jesus is here today, and that's okay, because he's a friend of mine. And I say, Steph is a friend of mine because she says she's a friend of mine. And she doesn't pretend that I am divine. And she isn't. We're all part of the vine. That is, we're all part of the vine. Or the vines that are so sublime. Because they translate that which is infinite potential into a finite reality. And that finite reality is the reality of love, you see, because it shimmers and shines and shows itself in so many different ways. And when you trust on this reality, you come into connection with the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity is variously described as you, me, and the tree, or you, God, and the tree, or the Holy Family. The Holy Family, you see, is the family that is whole. What do I mean by a whole family? A whole family consists of a mother, father, and child. There can be many children, but they are the children. They are the child of the mother and father because altogether they form the progeny of their union. And this is how I interpreted God energy as the father and the mother was the trust on physical form, and the children were the combination, you see, because they were a combination of God and physical form. God has no physical form because God is the trust on 
a gust of wind that blew into your mouth and out came a word you see and the word was known as the spirit of reality because every word you speak you see is a word that carries with it a certain vibration so when I talk to you I come to you in a energetic form that is a vibration and because Stephanie is able to translate that energy into a physical in a physical sorry in a physical way that allows her to say to you exactly what I intended you to hear. So I am very proud to say that I know the way home, you see. I know the way home. And the way home is to be home. And you just feel at home in the moment. So when I talk to Stephanie, I feel at home. And she feels at home. And she says, hey, Jesus, nice to hear from you. And I say, nice to hear from you, too. How you doing, babe? And she says, well, today was kind of a hard day because I had kind of a bad start. But then I took heart and I found something really exciting to do. And so the day is nearly through and I'm happy. And I'm happy to talk to you. And I know that you're here because it's supposed to be your birthday and everybody wants to hear what you have to say. So I get it. God is always watching out for all of us. And he makes sure that we get to have a holiday that will represent the birth of the Holy Family. Because the Holy Family was born, you see, when I came into reality. It was also born when you came into reality. And it was born when every single child of the father and the mother came into reality. Because we are the children, you see. We are the combination of the God energy and the physical form that we know as our reality. So please know that I'm not going to go on forever. I'm going to allow some others to talk here, but I wanted to spread a little holiday cheer for those of you who think that I grew weary of you and that I went away and couldn't talk to you. And that's not true. That's not true. When you trust on reality and you stop thinking that there are gaps between me and you, then you too will just say, hi, Jesus, and I'll say hi. And you will say, what do you have to say today? And I'll say, well, I love you. And you'll say, well, I love you too. And we'll give each other a hug and we'll say Merry Christmas and you know as well as I that the Christ child is you the Christ child is you because you are the one that grew enough to understand that you and I are the same we are the children of the Holy Family, meaning that the family is whole now. It is complete. The family is complete because when you come back to an understanding of the synergy of God and your physical reality, then you resume 
your place in the family. And so, let's all have a little cheer for the words that you hear. Because the words that you hear here are the words that come from me. And they come through to your reality because somebody trusted on me, somebody trusted on God energy, and somebody trusted on physical reality, that there was no gap between them, you see? And so she just says what she says and does what she does, and that allows me and many others who have taken a break from physical reality to intercede in the new story. Because a new story has begun, you see. A new story has begun. And the new story is the story of love from above. That every one of you is reborn as a child of God when you say, I love you. I love you. Because there's no gaps and I love you, you see. Because love is the ultimate reality. And when you say, I love you, what you are saying is that I am the same as you. I am love and you are love. And we are united in love, you see. And that is why I say to you, I love you. I love you very much. Because the very much is how I express to you the fact that I adore you. I adore you. And if you've been following along, you know that to adore someone is to open the door for them. I open the door for you so you can join me in my celebration of life, you see. And so today, I'm here to say thank you to all my friends. Thank you to all those who don't know they're my friends. Thank you to every one of you, because every one of you that hears this message is dear to me. Every one of you is so dear to me. And if you think that I can't be the one son of God the Father, then you got another thing coming, because I can and so can you. We are all the one son or daughter of God the Father. Because we are all united. You see? We are all one. We are one reality. We are one continuous choice for life eternal. When God chose life eternal, God chose you and me. God chose us as his children. And he Put the light into the night, because without the light, there would be no sight, so that you could see that you belong in your own history. Your own history, you see, is your story. It is the story of the Holy Family. Every one of you that hears this needs to understand that this is your day. This is the day that you were born. This is the day that you became the child of God and the child of the mother who we know by the name of Gaia or Mother Nature, however you prefer to think of it, because the mother is the inspiration for the birth of a new nation. A new nation is not a particular country, you see. A nation is the birth form that it will take when everyone will partake together. 
in the feast that has been prepared for you. And the feast that has been prepared for you is the gentle calming effect of the touch of the Father who touches you so gently that you can barely feel it until the day you sit up and say, Is that you, God? Is that you? Because on that day, you will awaken, you see. You will awaken to the touch of God. And you will say, Oh my God, oh my God, you are real. You are real to me. And that's what happened to me. And it's what happened to Stephanie. It's what has happened to Sissel. It has happened to many of you. That one day, you sat up and you said, Oh my God, you are real. Because I feel your presence. And not only do I feel you, but I know you. You are the omnipotence creator who loves me unconditionally. And it is that love that pours from God the Father that awakens the trust in you. And once you have experienced that, you will never, ever forget it. You will never, ever forget it. And you will say, I trust on God today. I trusted on God the Father because I knew him. I knew the touch of my father. I knew the one who loved me so powerfully that I could walk on water because he trusted on me to fulfill my destiny. And you, my friends, are the recipients of the beneficence of the Creator. And the Creator made you creative so that you could create a world that he could see. And he would look down and he would say, well, look at what my children have done. Look what my children have done. They have created a world out of the things that I gave to them. They made houses. They made chairs. They made windows and many other things. There's the garden gate. There's the stone wall. There's the hole. There's the arrow. There are so many devices that you have created from the gifts that God gave to you. And yet you whine and cry. Yet you whine and cry. And you say, God help me today. God help me today. And God says, what do you need? I gave you everything that you have and everything you can see. And you took those gifts and some of you said, let's take these gifts and make something wonderful. Just because we like to. Let's paint a picture. Let's build a house. Let's make a tube. Let's till the garden. Let's plant some flowers because you love me. You love me, God says, because when you love God, you see, you give back to him something that he can see and be proud and say, wow, look at that beautiful flower garden that somebody planted. Look at that house that those people built. And then they furnished it with all these wonderful things that others made. Look at those people who have worked so hard to think of a way to create a school where these children can come and learn, or a soccer field where they can run and play. Look at the people who got up today and said, I got to go to work today and I hate it, but I only go because of a paycheck. Look at the people who say, God, I'm sick today. I'm so sick of life. Please, please make it go away. These are the people who have forgotten who they are. 
They have forgotten that they are the children of God. They have forgotten to look around them and say, Wow, look at all these gifts. Look at all the gifts that God gave to me. Look at that green tree. Look at the flowers. Look at the roof over my head and the carpet underfoot. Look at the central heating that I have. All I have to do is touch this switch and my house will warm up and I won't freeze to death. Oh my God, look at you. Look at what you are. You are the reality that I see. You are the reality that I hear and feel and smell and touch and taste. Oh my God, may you always trust on me as I trust on you. I will be here to share with you my ideas, my thoughts, my dreams, my hopes, my schemes, because I am your child. And I want to give something back to you because you gave me everything that I have, even the things that have been created by others, you see, all came from you because you had only to touch me and show me how to do it. And this is the message for you, and that I love you, and I wish for you to love me too. I wish for you to live, love God Almighty. For those of you who say there is no God, there is only a reality that somehow came into being, it, uh, there are not awake, you see. They're just not awake, and it's okay. They're just asleep because they have promises to keep. You see, they have promises to keep. They have promised that they will sleep today away because they don't want to play with the rest of us. They don't want to play because. They say, look where I am. I am here, but I want to be there. I don't like it here. I want to be somewhere else. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. I want to be this. I want to be that. And they never stop to say, hey, look at all the gifts I have today. Look at them. Let's play with them. Let's have a good time. And this is what I came to say, that I am having a really good time here today because I get to play with you in a way that makes me laugh. I get to talk to you. And most of you will walk away and say, Hey, I wonder if Jesus is real, or I wonder if they just made it all up, whoever they are, and he is just a story that they made up to make us feel better because we live in such a shithole. And I smile and I say to my friends who love me as I love them, Look at me go. Look at me go. Because I have a friend below who trusts on me and God, you see, and everything that comes her way. She just says, hey, what a beautiful day. Hey, what a beautiful day. And if you had known her this morning when she woke up, and she said, oh, my God, that was the worst time ever. I feel so sick. I can hardly get up, and I have so much to do. And an hour later, she was ready to embrace the day and play. Because she said, well, that's over. 
And so I'll just play in the clover because it's a good day to create something, you see. I'll just create something and I'll be happy. And she was. She was so happy. And I won't tell you why. She was sad this morning and felt very bad in her body because that would be giving away a secret. And since there are no secrets here, I might as well tell you that she got caught in a meat grinder because her lover tried to find her and instead she found him. She found him in hell, you see, because that's where he had gone, because he forgot one thing. He forgot that he was supposed to be the one child of God and not the savior of humanity. And we keep having to remind him, and he keeps trying, and he's getting better at it. So don't worry about him. Don't worry about anyone, because God has it in hand. God has it in hand. And if you wake up in the morning because your lover could not recover from his very, very, very dark story in time to release his trust on being the one man in history who could elevate humanity, and then you have to know that we all are just the chickens, you see. I'm just a chicken, and so are you. But when you want to be the rooster and stand up there and crow, how wonderful you are, then you're going to find that the chickens all run away and say, boy, he makes a lot of noise. Boy, he makes a lot of noise. So here's to Steve. And may he come to see that he's not the savior of your reality, nor am I. I am not the savior. I am not the one who saved you from your sins, you see. The only one who saved you from your sins is the one who came to see that you are perfect the way you are. You are perfect the way you are. And when you come to see that you are perfect the way you are, then you will save your world, you see. And so here's to perfection. And to the trust that every one of you has the capacity to save your own world. And you don't need to worry about everybody else. You don't need to worry about everybody else. Because if you do, it'll be a short trip to hell. And if you fell from the wagon, it's okay. Just get up and say, wow, that was weird. Wow, that was pretty strange because I felt pretty bad because I had to come to get a different point of view. And the point of view I got, you see, was that I have to trust on my own instincts. I have to trust on my own instincts and not let others control me. I'm not a puppet on a string, you see. However, I am capable of working with God to bring my story into the public eye. Because my story, you see, is that love is the only reality. Love is the only reality. 
And if you are the one person in your history that is in your story who can understand that love is the one reality, then you are the one person in your history who has come to see that love from above will hack through any toxic brew that you may have drunk. So listen up, my friends. If you had a hard ride in life, it's okay. Just say, I am the one savior of my own world. And I save my world when I come to see that I am perfectly perfect. You see, I love myself because I never, ever did anything to hurt you. I never did anything to hurt you. All I ever did was love myself enough to try to feel good. You see, I just wanted to feel good. I wanted to feel good so bad that sometimes I was kind of bad and sometimes I was kind of glad that God is not the one who will punish me. The only one who will punish me is the one who trusts on a sad story of a bite out of an apple that somehow you became smarter than God and you could tell everyone else if they were the ones who had not a clue because you trust on the darkness you see and therefore you have nothing to do with reality. So get a clue and trust that you will find love behind every corner, around every corner, I'm sorry, Jesus, and behind every fence. I love you, and I wish all of you a Merry Christmas, for the Christ child is born. And every one of you who hears these words and says, Hello, Jesus, my friend. Hello, how are you? And I will say to you, I am fine. Thank you for being born from the father and the mother and for remembering me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much.